So I forgot to mention um, on my first two slides, there are some images. On the first one, um, there's an image of the power of two thing that I was talking about. Um, and then on the second one, it is a uh, piece of curriculum that they would use uh, within the Navajo uh, uh, program. So out of the two, if within that Navajo one, um, that image is a, a lesson that they would talk about um, regarding Navajo history. I just want to point that out. But within this last uh, slide on the, the case study, there is another image on the side that shows um, just yet another uh, example. And this one is specifically um, a classroom poster commemorating the Navajo people's survival of federally attempted genocide and their return from a concentration camp in Fort Sumter, uh, New Mexico in, uh, in the late 19th century. Um, but for this last slide, the school is um, predicated on the assumption that learning more than one language is actually a good thing. Uh, we know English is the dominant language, but we believe that all three forms um, of the languages should be on equal terms. Uh, this is what they strive for. And then, uh, like the parents at NACA, the PDH parents want their children to do well in school um, by dominant language and cultural standards. And in recent years, PDH has ranked actually among the highest performing schools in the district, surpassing schools serving uh, more affluent native English speaking students. Um, so, like NACA, the PDH community has managed to negotiate uh, systemic constraints by emphasizing just high academic expectations, cons uh, just like a very content-rich curriculum, and children's heritage, language, and culture being seen as an essential resource for learning.